long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. So, again, we're back with Matt Bellany. Matt, <laughs> I got to look at you and go, really, dude? Uh, you know, you kind of go back and look at his comments from his The Town podcast, and you realize he's inferring that Kathleen Kennedy is incompetent, and Screen Rant, along with Deadline, ran with it, not realizing that defending her about her wokeness, and that she's not woke, uh, then people got to say, well, then she's incompetent, right? So this article is basically doubling down. It's from Screen Rant. Doubling down on um, what Deadline, or uh, the direct posted about what Matt Bellany said. Now, Matt Bellany thinks that Kathleen Kennedy is not good at her job. But... He's trying to imply that she's not woke. Now, we've talked about this, and I have to amend my comments to add, if Kathleen Kennedy isn't woke, then she's incompetent. Or she's a raging, bitter, miserable feminazi, or she's a... She's an idiot. Okay, or she's all four. Now, I believe she's all four, okay? Because we know too many instances of her allowing things that never should have been in Star Wars. The, she did not watch the dailies uh, for Soilo, a Soy War story, until it was 80% done filming. And she was so horrified by what she saw, she had to go to England fire the directors, bring in Ron Howard to see if he could scrape together a movie. And what they came up with was probably not as bad as it would have been, but it also lost, they, they admit, $90, $90 million, more like $200 million. You know, she allowed Vice Andrew, Admiral Gender Studies. This is woke. This isn't anything what Star Wars is supposed to be about. This is basically, I feel like every time I look at Laura Dern now, I look at, I'm looking at a maggot. Really, I mean, that's how I feel. This is how repulsive to me this is. And of course, here's Ray the best of Sivar. Being, being raised up at the expense of all the men around her. The excuse is, well, she was surrounded by men, subservient, uh, poorly created male characters that come up weak. And we all know what was done to Han and Luke. M old male pale stale, right? Murdering Han Solo by his ugly bastard son's hands. Like Palpatine. Luke Skywalker, do we even have to go in there? Then we have Phoebe Waller-Bridge as Helena Shaw and Indiana Jones on the Dial of Destiny. You know, I'm not going to say anything about her looks, even though I, I find her to be rather mannish, um, but it's, it's, mo it's mostly the way she behaves. It's mostly the way she the character behaves. She's smug, likes Sabine and Ahsoka. Okay. Um, and smug, smugness is a theme running throughout a lot of the terribly written female characters, like the, the, the blonde one with the dirty hair. I mean, you want to say ugly, that's ugly. That chick is ugly. Okay. This is woke. This relationship here, right here is not adult. It is not romantic. It's fucking woke. Okay, 
It's grotesque. We don't need to see it. There's no reason for it. Why would anybody look at the head of Lucasfilm and act and, and pretend like she's not the one at fault? But why is Bellany blaming Disney for this? Okay, why is he implying that she's incompetent? Question mark. And the reason why I ask is because when I see stuff like this, I'm reminded of the prophet Jeremiah, I think, said, woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. And this right here is evil. I don't care what you think. That's fine. But in my mind, if you want to show shit like this, keep it out of something the general public watches. There's nothing adult about relationships like this. Okay, there just isn't. And if I offend anybody, I don't care. Because it all leads back to who Kennedy really is, doesn't it? Let's talk further. Is the glue to all five of these films that gave us all of our rhythm and all of our melody, the great maestro, John Williams. a pentagram on the floor and chanted, I summon thee three times. I think there was an assumption being made for quite a while that girls didn't care about Star Wars or that girls weren't identifying with characters like Luke Skywalker or Han Solo. They were only identifying with Princess Leia. Urinal cakes? <laughs> I don't believe this. All these years, the doyen of Seattle's elite, looking down her nose at everyone in sight, she owes it all to this. She's managed to have her urinal cake and eat it too. <laughs> Hello, Marta. I'd like to speak to Maris. Oh, why not? Ah. She's in the final level of her guru's serenity training, the week-long vow of silence, day six. No, 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 Marta, that's all right. She doesn't have to come to the phone. Just give her this message. I've flushed out her family secret. <laughs> Hello, Maris. This is, like, what we understand to be Star Wars, like, the idea that, like, that only came from George Lucas, that that o like that only George Lucas holds the key for what we understand to be Star Wars is just untrue. And I think the, the prequels are an ex excellent example of that. I mean, the idea that, like, when you're hiring a director, that everyone is sitting in there waiting for George Lucas and not for the person who's going to know to hire Ralph McQuarrie, that's the problem. That's the misogyny and the and the and the problem with the auteur myth as it stands today. Because they're not thinking this is the person that will hire the right people and this is the person that will be able to create the lookbooks and direct people to get them to that place. They're just thinking, do you know do you have all the answers? And the truth is, um, is when I saw Frozen does, as a as a grown ass thing. woman, I um <laughs> I cried through the entire movie. I, there was just something about the relationship between the sisters, the the like de villainization of uh, the classic kind of fairy tale bad bad guy, you know, um, uh, the concept of true love being between two sisters and not a heterosexual relationship, like it just mm -hmm. it just destroyed me completely, and I thought. Gosh, you know, I would love to make something like this that is, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, Disney, meaning it's something that, like, my parents would have allowed me to see when I was younger as a queer person. Gotcha. But I would have been able to understand as a queer person, and I think I, I would have had a completely different life. And so I really was inspired by it and was like, God, I would love to make a story like this. Um, and so when I was developing this original idea to pitch to Kathleen, um, I thought, well, you know, it can't just be that. Uh, you know, when you're pitching Star Wars, you have to pull from what 
you know, George was also interested in. Like, it can't just be like, well, I'm referencing, especially if you're going to set something, you know, in the, during the High Republic or end of High Republic into prequels, you, you don't have the Skywalker saga. Like, you can't reference uh-huh. a character that was created by George and or Filoni. Like, you have to create your own new characters. Okay, so if Kathleen Kennedy's not woke. Leslie Headland ends up being a showrunner for a show called The Acolyte, which is very much a woke show. We've got Headland talking about it. We've got interviews where she's talking down to black women. We've got interviews where she's disparaging George Lucas. She's not woke. No, of course not. Kathy would never hire this person. If she was woke, <clears throat> really? Then explain every t- pile of dribbled bullshit that comes out of her mouth, okay? You cannot say Kathleen Kennedy isn't woke and get away with merely implying she's incompetent, which either way it gets her gets her it gets her job gone, okay? If she's woke but competent, that's one thing. If she's not woke but incompetent, or if she's woke and incompetent, or if she's woke and a nasty feminazi, you've got a problem. If she's a woke, feminazi, incompetent idiot, you've got a bigger problem. If she's someone who only made her mark in the world because of who she worked with and who she made coffee for, then you've got a big problem. Hedlund hired a a non-binary BIPOC. You know, we're missing the heroic deeds, all right, that male characters bring. Okay, there's something, and I hate to say this because I am a woman, lacking without them. Okay? We're, we're basically telling little boys these days that all the heroic deeds they want to do, they want to be knights, they want to save the princess, they want to do all this stuff. We're telling them they have to be subservient now. They're bad because they're boys. That's what... Kathleen Kennedy's Star Wars is saying. The fact that you can sit there and pretend that Ray Palpatine isn't woke because she's surrounded by men makes you an inobservant moron. Okay? Here's the deal. Ray. Han and Leia's son is a dark side using emo douchebag. That's not masculine. Finn is reduced to black male token character. Poe is reduced to secondary male character who isn't trustworthy. Who has all, I mean, Oscar Isaac has absolutely no masculinity. My dog is taller than him. Okay. All right. And then acting like, well, because the Mandalorian has a male character. So... We're not talking about John Favreau. And stop giving her credit for the Mandalorian. All right. Do we have to explain what happened when Kennedy realized Luke Skywalker showed up in episode 16? She lost her shit because she hates Luke. She hates Han because they were created by a man. Okay. That's, that is the ultimate idea of wokeness, okay? That is the ultimate idea of, again, what Jeremiah said. Woe to those who call good evil and evil good, okay? That is the fucking problem we have going on here, Okay? If Kathleen Kennedy isn't woke, why the fuck did we get what happened to Han Solo, Luke Skywalker? Why were all the male characters uh, crushed 
into the ground. Even her new male characters. Why was Kylo Ren about as mature as a 10-year-old? Okay, you want me to believe she's not woke? I, I just, I, I'm scratching my head because I'm going to leave you guys with this. She is woke. She is incompetent. She is a bitter, nasty feminazi. And she's dumber than a box of rocks. Okay? And she is easily got to where she got because she was at least smart enough to shut her fucking mouth and to pre pretend she understood the things. Obviously, now that we have 10 years of this shit, she didn't understand because all she could see was this. The force is female, which basically undermines and subverts everything George created. It basically takes out the true equality, vive la difference, that he created with Han and Leia. And the idea of what a man is worth, what a woman's worth. It removed the romance and suffering between Padme and Anakin. And it basically reduced Star Wars to a inauthentic political diatribe by amateurist activists who think because of the Battle of Endor as compared to Vietnam is somehow anti-right wing. And it's like, Lyndon B. Johnson was a Democrat. And in reality, if you look at the right wing back in the day, they didn't support Vietnam. So that doesn't make any sense. Okay. And the politics that they're shoving into Star Wars, to be brutally honest, has nothing to do with anything that Star Wars is about. Okay, it's woke trash. And all roads lead back to Kennedy, allowing it to happen. The idea that she had to be convinced of Vice Admiral Gender Studies makes me just want to laugh out loud. Because I'm going to leave you with this. If she wasn't woke, why did she allow The Last Jedi Shooting Script, which is the most woke, disgusting, filthy piece of shit movie I've ever seen in my life, to be shot with only one draft, no rewrites? And why, when it failed, and Soilo is Soy War Story, which was uh, equally as woke, I'll say, why, after that failed so badly, was the person who was kind of in charge of uh, doing this stuff thrown under the bus, the token black girl at Lucasfilm, Carrie Hart? This is Steph signing out. I'll see you around the galaxy.